This is part 52 of Blazor tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how cookie authentication works in general and in our upcoming videos, we'll implement it to protect our Blazor web application. To be able to log in, a user needs a user account with our system. So the first step is user registration. The user fills a registration form with their preferred username and password and posts that form to the server. The server then hashes the password and stores it in the database. Hashing prevents password theft. Even if an attacker cracks and gains access to your system, they won't be able to steal passwords because they are hashed. Hashing is different from encryption. Encryption is reversible. That is, what is encrypted can also be decrypted. Hashing is one way. It is irreversible. Hashing scrambles plain text to produce a unique message digest. If implemented using a strong algorithm, there is no way to reverse the hashing process to reveal the original password. There are two approaches to hashing. Hashing without salt and hashing with random salt. When we hash passwords without salt, this can happen. Let's assume within our system, we have a user whose password is password underscore one. And when this goes through our hashing algorithm, it produces a unique message digest. Let's say we have another user and he also has got the same password, password underscore one. So when it goes through our hashing algorithm, the hash that it produces is the same as before. So an attacker can hash random passwords and then compare the hashes to crack the password. So the better approach is to use random salt. When a random salt is added to the hashing process, the generated hash will not be the same even if the plain text passwords are. So the first step is user registration. Next, user login. The registered username and password can then be used on the login form. The login form is posted to the server. The server looks up the username in the database, hashes the supplied password and compares it to the already hashed password in the database. If the match, then the system knows the user is who he claims to be. Otherwise, access is denied by sending HTTP status code 401. If the supplied username and password matches, the server creates an access token which uniquely identifies the user session. This access token is stored in the database and is also attached to the response cookie. This cookie is then returned to the client. The user is now logged in. On every subsequent request, the browser automatically sends the cookie to the server. The server reads the access token from the cookie and checks it against the one in the database associated with that user. If the match, access is granted. Once the user logs out of the application, both the authentication cookie and the access token in the database are deleted. If this is a bit abstract at the moment, please don't worry. We'll implement cookie authentication in our upcoming videos and it will be much clearer at that point. At this point, you might be wondering, should we use cookie authentication or token authentication? The answer really depends on the application architecture. This is our Blazor application architecture. We have a Blazor web application and a web API. Blazor web application calls web API. Depending on how you want your application to scale, you may have both the Blazor web application and web API deployed on the same server or different servers. Depending on the demand, if you want to be able to independently scale up and down these two applications, then you may have to deploy them on different servers. If they are deployed on different servers, we cannot use the same cookie authentication to authenticate both the Blazor web application and web API. This is because a cookie created by one domain cannot be accessed by another domain. Although it is possible to share cookies between subdomains, it's a standard practice to use cookie-based authentication for web applications and token-based authentication for web APIs. In our upcoming videos, we'll implement cookie authentication to protect our Blazor web application and token authentication to protect our web API. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening. Thank you.